Let's bring in now the former Secretary of State and former CIA Director, Fox News contributor Mike Pompeo. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Secretary. I've, I want to start out first with some words from the Chairman of the House Intelligence Committee just moments ago, called this a security failure at this Trump rally, and called the, said of the shooting, how is it that someone could get on the roof with a superior position, with a weapon, and attempt to assassinate the former President Donald Trump. He then asks, is it just unthinkable, unfathomable? We need to know, is this a protocol failure? Is this a, a resources issue, he asks, or is this just a failure of those who were on site that day? Mr. Secretary, you have had time now to analyze the facts we have right now. What conclusions have you come to? Well, Sandra, it's great to be with you. Um, I begin by saying the, the loss of life that took place. I pray for the family of the deceased and those that are still injured, and of course, for President Trump and his family as well. You know, there'll be lots of time to answer those questions. I think the, the questions that the House Intelligence Chair laid out are exactly the right set of questions as the way to frame what happened. It is undoubtedly the case that there was a failure yesterday. The fact that someone got a shot on the president, the former president of the United States at a rally, someone campaigning for president, um, suggests that you just didn't get it right. Now, whether it was systemic or whether it was an individual who failed to do their job yesterday, is hard to know. Um, but make no mistake about it, we need to get to the bottom to understand not only how it happened yesterday, but make sure that something like this can never happen again. And Mr. Secretary, good to have you with us uh, on this day when I mean, if Donald Trump had not turned his head at the last moment there before the gunman pulled the trigger, we could be telling a very different story today. And we, we try to, in this moment, look back to see what was the root cause of what happened yesterday. Let me read a little bit from a statement that Melania Trump put out earlier today. She said, this morning, ascend above the hate, the vitriol, and the simple-minded ideas that ignite violence. We all want a world where respect is paramount, family is first, and love transcends. We can realize this world again. Each of us must demand to get it back. We must insist that respect fills the cornerstone of our relationships again. When you look at the political rhetoric and the vitriol that was directed toward Donald Trump, uh, things like ex mega extremism, uh, an existential threat to democracy, I mean, does it seem too far out of the realm of possibilities that someone would take that to heart and perpetrate a horrible incident like this? John, I, there, it is undoubtedly the case that the direct fallout from rhetoric where um, you, you see someone who now for years and years has been accused of destroying democracy, of, of things that we frankly never had any president accused of before, and then echoed throughout the entire media ecosphere. I, I lived it when I was the Secretary of State. I, I saw it. Um, I also saw an incredible warrior in the White House in President Trump. We saw that warrior on display yesterday as well. But it is undoubtedly the case that when you talk about an individual in the way that they've spoken about him, when you speak about his supporters in the way that began with Hillary Clinton calling them deplorables, when you denigrate these human beings and don't debate the actual ideas, it leads to people who, have, who are evil, who are wicked, just as Melania described them. It leads to the kinds of actions that we saw yesterday. The responsibility for the murder that took place yesterday and the assault and the assassination effort on the former president belongs to that individual. But it is undoubtedly the case that the rhetoric that has been just such a high level for so many years creates more an increased likelihood that you get an event just like you saw yesterday. I'm, God was with him in that moment. Uh, the, the Lord was there. The Psalm 3 got it right. Uh, and the fight will continue the battle to get America back to the right place, just as the First Lady described, is very real and must continue. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I want to play out this from Michael Watley, the RNC chair, SOT 11 guys. Uh, he joined Shannon on Fox News Sunday earlier, and he talked about the messaging that needs to happen after this. Listen. There is no place in politics in any way, shape, or form for this kind of violence, for these types of actions. It's a, it's a horrific act, um, and we certainly don't know all of the details, and we're going to have time for investigations on it. Uh, but right now, I think everybody in America needs to stop. They need to pause. They need to reflect on what is actually important for us in this political process going forward. So what does the message, Mr. Secretary, from your view, need to be from all involved, all parties, as we head now just months from Election Day to bring calm in this country? I think the message needs to be very clear. There's literally no place for violence in our political space. We're in the freest, greatest nation. I'm going to be in Milwaukee this week. I'm going to see a, a bunch of folks from Kansas who helped me get elected 
decade ago. These are, these are people just like we're at that rally yesterday who went there to be part of democracy, to express their views and to support a candidate they thought was going to take care of their families and their lives and keep them safe. The message has to be we live in this incredible place with enormous freedom. There is no place for violence. We should debate contentiously, if it's required, these different visions for how to move America forward. And we need to make sure that we elect leaders who honor that each and every day and who deliver real outcomes for the kinds of folks who showed up there yesterday. Um, Senator, I'm convinced we can get it right. I think President's, President Trump's remarks this morning uh, were exactly right. What he wrote was exactly right about how we bring America back to the place that we continue to live in this incredibly special place. I'm optimistic we will get there, and I am confident that we have um, a candidate in my party that can help us get there as quickly as possible. It's absolutely necessary, Sandra. Uh, Mr. Secretary, let me come back, if I could, to the security situation there at the rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. Clearly, you had a picture-perfect uh, reaction by the Secret Service uh, in terms of uh, covering the protectee, the uh, counter-sniper team, uh, did its work uh, to great effect. But the fact that this sniper was allowed to get up on that roof, which I calculated was only a little more than 400 feet away from where the president was speaking, I mean, how does something like that go uncovered? I, I have been to innumerable presidential events, campaign events, where there is a physical barrier that marks the outside of the perimeter, whether it's, it's done with dump trucks or buses or something. And if you can't get vehicles in there to create a wall, you make sure that you've got security in the areas that you can't cover. Yet that did not happen. Yeah, John, it, it looks like that this was missed yesterday. I, I, you know, I, I, I know this myself, right? I have, I have a security team today as well. Uh, the Iranians are still trying to kill me. And mm -hmm. so I've been to a lot of events just like you have where there's very tight security. The fact that if, I, if I've seen the map right, the fact that there was a clear line from a, a elevated position uh, for someone to take a shot at the president suggests that either the homework wasn't done or there was a failure in execution or perhaps both. And I'm, I'm confident that uh, Chairman Comer will get to the bottom of what happened, how Secretary Mayorkas and his team failed to protect the president. Some was able to get a shot that actually struck the former president of the United States. John, it is, you, you've seen these events before. We know how to protect senior leaders in America and the responsibility of the Secret Service to do that, uh, who I have come to love and admire, uh, clearly is something they need to look at internally as well. How, how'd they get it so wrong and permit something like this to happen? All right, Mr. Secretary, I really appreciate you joining us today. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Sandra. Secretary. Thank you, John. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.